So this is the presentation, as Livio said, of uh, Kevin Jaco, who is a colleague here in Lyon and also a friend, obviously. And uh, I will try to present this huge piece of work, uh, as is not available today. Kevin could not be with us today, but I will try to do the presentation. He does usually <laughs> very fluently as best as I can, but I'm not the author of this huge piece of work, so you will understand if I will not say anything which is really important. So this work is very important because it's also very representative of what is done in Notre Dame. And I think this is real important to understand how it is difficult and crucial to gather tons of information, just like uh, Roxanne just presented now, from different horizons. And it's really uh, something which is very, very, <laughs> very tough to put together and to make it possible to be shared by huge communities, each one with its center points of interest and uh, different skills and different knowledges. So this is so this work, I think it's something really representative of the difficulty of working in this uh, <laughs> wonderful also uh, uh, work and uh, scientific uh, scientific um, collaboration. So uh, Valeria, right, I will briefly introduce, I think you can skip, uh, skip to uh, slide four, which is right, this one. So you have a, an old uh, picture of Notre Dame. Uh, we must say that uh, Notre Dame de Paris, one of the oldest Gothic cathedrals in France, but you have also Noyon, Saint Lys, Long, Sens, which are very big pieces of uh, Gothic architecture of around that period. We start, so the construction of the cathedral started in uh, 1163 and was almost completed in th 1345. But uh, obviously, at the end of the, the 19th century, Notre Dame was in a really in a pitiful state, a very bad state. So it has lost large quantity of its decorations and sculpture, and also the spire was uh, was in a very bad that the, 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 the spire that was there at that time was a very bad condition. It's also very, maybe the best known monument in France because uh, we can nearly uh, count four, uh, 14 million visitors each year. So it's uh, the most visited monument in, uh, in France and maybe Europe. So slide uh, five, uh, yes, uh, Valeria. And uh, so it is uh, estimated that the construction of the Gothic framework, the forest as it's called, of the nave, the choir and the transept of Notre Dame consumed around 1000 oaks. That seems to be a lot. Well, actually it is a lot, but approximately 97% of them, of those oaks, were cut from rather small trees, which diameter didn't exceed 25 to 30 centimeters and up maybe to 12 meters long. The rest of these oaks, maybe only 3%, were a bit bigger, like 50 centimeters in diameter and longs, <laughs> maybe 15 meters. But these are not uh, very big pieces of wood, as you might uh, imagine. There's a uh, uh, this proportion are uh, similar to those were measured in the 13th century frameworks and the other cathedrals that I mentioned before, like or others like Lisieux, Rouen, uh, Bourges, Bayeux. And uh, difference of what you might think is, uh, in addition to their small diameter, the, the, the oaks that were used here was rather young. They were an average of 60 years old, which is not that much. So. If you consider this, that you have such information you can have by, you know, simply counting the concentric circles in the, in the diameter of the of the, the, the um, of the woods. Uh, so uh, we had uh, so some elements here. So we have uh, all these uh, wooden elements, and uh, the uh, the angle of the roof was about around 55 degrees, and we have 
we had one uh, service gateway which was connecting all some parts of this uh, of this forest we might at the end of this presentation uh, kevin did also uh, some very nice renderings 3d renderings of this huge work and we will see a, a very nice walk through this forest and you will will be able to appreciate all these uh, special details so uh, if you go next slide, <laughs> Valeria, you <laughs> you are faster than I am. So, uh, so uh, at the end of the revolution, the French Revolution, the Cathedral of Notre Dame was, as I said, in a very bad state, very pitiful state, and there were a competition for the restoration of this uh, of this cathedral, which was launched in 1842, and was won in 1844 by two architects, uh, Jean-Baptiste de Lassue and mm, much well-known uh, uh, Eugène Manuel de Viollet-le-Duc, who started to restore this uh, monument. And the famous spire that <laughs> all of you have seen in the past was uh, completing in 1859 and built in only 18 months. Uh, so the works, were, well, the, the, the framework was in wood, but the cover was entirely in, in uh, lead, except for the statues, the eight outside statues, which were in copper. And um, fortunately, those statues were removed a few days before the, uh, before the arson, so they could be saved and they are now uh, stored in a safe place uh, somewhere. I don't remember, but they are safe. Uh, so, if we see the next uh, slide, we can go to the slide. Oops. I'm experimenting some issues here in Lyon. Maybe it's the weather. So, slide nine, if you mind, uh, Valeria. Objectives. Yes can go on a little bit and one more. So Kevin and also very skilled in those very <laughs> fancy <laughs> presentations. Uh, so the uh, what are the objectives of uh, this uh, huge piece of work of this uh, restitution? It's a work that started back in late uh, 2019 few months after the fire so that was set on that was uh, uh, on uh, Notre Dame and uh, the objective was to build a 3D model uh, with a sufficiently uh, high level of detail and accuracy that could be allow its exploitation in a 3D information system like those that we just seen um, in the presentation before so the restitution itself is uh, something which is quite old because it's a theoretical reconstruction designed of on the basis of scientific data that uh, can be uh, found around. Uh, like all the restitutions, uh, this uh, model is, you can say that it's finished, it's never finished because it's only based on observation and interpretation of existence rep representations like pictures, models, and so like existing surveys and contains obviously part of a hypothesis uh, which uh, are, subject, uh, are the subject of the documentation that you find at a certain time, but which might change. Uh, in time. So it's it's uh, never finished. The restitution by its nature uh, is always in progress, as I says, because it follows the evolution as a of state of knowledge on the frames and of the roofing that we might have found um, uh, searching back in past of a recent material and uh, much older material that came to us so next uh, slide well we missed the different topics that i tried to explain so we have some uh, uh if you could uh, just uh, hopla, go further with the uh, with just a moment 
it's really here we have also an international collaboration you see between uh, me and Valeria which is a uh, which is part of the difficult task of research today. Oh, blah. thank you. Okay. So oh, we have we can show here some uh, uh, chronological milestones of restitution because it's quite an old way to understand and to uh, observe uh, the history. So this restitution is an ancient practice. The objective is not to give a history of it, but to emphasize some important milestones in its evolution. From the end of the 18th century, as you see on this picture on the right, there was something very important, which was called the Grand Prix de Rome, and where some skillful architect completed their training through a direct contact with those old monuments and museums in Italy, because since a long time, the Italy is a, a very important place uh, as France, as other piece of places in Europe, but is uh, somehow the, the cradle of, of the, the ancient uh, history. So they had to mobilize the observation and drawing skills in order to identify and understand ancient architecture. And they also had to propose a reconstruction of it, um, accompanied by explanatory um, memorandum. This work was sent to Paris from the collection of what is called the Envoi de Rome. And here we can see uh, an example of a restitution, uh, Temple of Diane, the Nîmes, uh, um, a restitution from 1872. And we go further, if you wish, we have some other examples. Uh, could you step forward, Valeria? Sorry, but... oh. Oops. <laughs> okay. Next time we'll use uh, Zoom, maybe. <laughs> So we had a, another picture before, but don't mind. Yes, you had this one. So I know a bit the presentation of Kevin because in the past few days we had many occasions to present it uh, in the Fête de la Science and others. So I know a bit of what it did, but I consider that this piece of work is really huge. So I, I just try to focus on the main topics, but it's a very, very important uh, work. So we can go. Uh, further also, uh, Valeria, are you? Yeah. So this is, uh, I'm trying to be on the same. Uh, so these are two important restitutions of Rome. We have here the antique Rome by Paul Bigot, uh, which dates back from 1904. It's a 66 square meters restitution of the ancient Rome. And you have another one even bigger just below, which is from Italo Gismondi and it's from 1935. And it's much bigger, as you see it, 278 square meters. So we have, uh, if I try to find also the... Uh, so this is a, a plaster restitution of about so this uh, surface. And uh, another uh, model of an ancient Rome was made uh, a few decades later but by Italo Gismondi. But you imagine that all this restitution, all this work to, took almost a lifetime through to be achieved. Today we can count on most efficient, effective tools that can be able to uh, represent uh, such, uh, such drawings. Uh, so, uh, like other restitution, if you go next uh, slide, uh, Valeria, that on the existing documentation, obviously you have these drawings uh, from two uh, architects, French architects, uh, Architecte du Patrimoine, who are working uh, now on this uh, representation. It took them two years to have a very precise survey, a drawing survey of uh, the, the forest uh, in Notre Dame. But there are many others representation which are quite important. And if you can go one slide. So 
so the models, you might have this exterior representation where the overall scale of these models do not uh, allow a detailed restitution because they're rather small. And the visible parts are limited to external envelope of the cathedral. So this is uh, quite interesting to see, but not very interesting to exploit for the, the restitution work. Another slide, you have the spire example, which are there are lots of example of restitution of this famous uh, Violendic spire. And uh, much uh, a bit bigger like a representation, but it doesn't allow to uh, explore some uh, uh, details, especially in the assemblies. And if you go one step beyond, so we have this experimental archaeology here that uh, are close to one to one scale, uh, which mean above all to understand the construction of all the trusses, section and assemblies of these pieces of uh, uh, of artwork. So this could lead to interesting representation, which could bring a better understanding of the, the, the way these uh, pieces of artwork are, are done. Um, next uh, slide. So we have also here some recent and more recent representation of the Cathedral de Notre Dame, which have partly served the purpose of this uh, restitution. 